Hey, welcome to Beyond the Scenes. This is the podcast that goes deeper into segments that originally aired on The Daily Show with Trevor Noah. Like, Beyond the Scenes, this, this is what you think about this podcast. This is what this podcast is like, all right? Like, you have a party, you go to the party, it's a good party. After that party, you go to the hotel lobby, and there's like at four o'clock in the morning, you're eating greasy food, you're eating Waffle House, you're telling all your deep, dark secrets. Somebody start twerking on top of the piano. Then the hotel manager come over and be like, how many of y'all actually stay at this hotel? And he'd be like, shut your hating ass up. Then the police show. That's basically what this podcast is. We are the party that happens after the original party that is The Daily Show. Uh, I'm Roy Wood Jr. Today, we're gonna be talking about the pink tax and the outsized cost of just being a woman. Let's play the clip. Being a woman can cost you, apparently an average of $1,400 a year thanks to gender price discrimination. If you're a woman, just about everything costs you more than similar products marketed for men. It's called the pink tax. Research has shown women pay more than men 42% of the time. In fact, a recent study shows it starts from the time you were born until the day you die. Today, I'm joined by Daily Show correspondent Desi Lydic and segment director Stacey Angeles, who both created this segment for the show, Ladies. Hello. Hi, Roy. Hello, Roy. Joining us also, we are very lucky to have Congresswoman Jackie Spear, who was in the original piece with Desi. And this Congresswoman has been fighting gender discrimination for 20, 30 years. Congresswoman Spear, welcome to Beyond the Scenes. It is my pleasure. Thank you for having me. Well, thank you for letting me be a man in this woman-centric topic. <laughs> Too bad we don't rule the world, though. Just because we're ruling this particular podcast, that's the problem. We're not ruling the world yet. I would be honest. I felt uncomfortable hosting this episode. I was like, well, maybe Desi need the guest host. I don't want to get in trouble. You're doing great, Roy. Okay, before we do anything, we have to define what the issue is. So, Desi, Stacy, let's start off off the top. What is the pink tax? Well, the pink tax refers to the markup on goods and services that are specifically being targeted to women. Gender price discrimination. So Roy, you everything you buy is cheaper than the same products we want to buy. Okay, so if we both bought deodorant and your and mine is man deodorant and yours is woman deodorant, same brand, you're paying more than me, is what you're saying, Stacey. It's more expensive for us to smell good than for you. Which is why Stacy and I refuse to smell good. Yeah, you're lucky this is on Zoom, Roy, because you don't <laughs> want to smell this. Okay. You won't even okay. let us back in the studio. Yes. Okay. Nothing to do with COVID. <laughs> <laughs> so, Congresswoman, Congresswoman, I'm sorry, I apologize for both of them. Um, <laughs> Why, why does the pink tax exist? And more importantly, how do manufacturers and retailers justify this tax? Well, the pink tax exists because it's a form of gender discrimination. It's not just about pink, it's about the fact that women's products cost more than men's products um, when they are basically identical. Um, it is important for us to address this because uh, as we all know, women still make less than men. Uh, for every dollar a man earns, a woman makes 82 cents. If you look of, at women of color, it's even more egregious. And that's real money when everything is said and done. Are there other examples of this other than deodorant? Because I'll be honest, as a man, this isn't something that you would normally think about because you're not buying a lot of women's items unless you are committed strong man in a relationship like I am. So you're not aware of this. Give me what, what other items other than deodorant? I have heard that women get worse deals on cars. But let me give you some products that kind of make the case. All right, Okay. so this is um, Dove deodorant for men and women. And as you can see here, uh, for a four pack, a woman's gonna pay $19.39. The man's gonna pay $13.58. But that's just deodorant, let's move on. How about probiotics for women? Um, okay. 32.79, 22.79 for a man. Um, All right, this is like the price is right. Let me guess the it next It is, one. the <laughs> price is wrong though. That's the problem. <laughs> Always so wrong. The, so the price is right needs to have a gender separate episode. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Maybe so, huh? So look at this. These are bibs, right? Bibs for okay. boys, bibs for girls. A dollar more for the girls' bibs. No, wait, there's more. What? Want, what? There's more. Oh, my God. These are kids' diapers. The kids' diapers, $37 for 
the girl. $33 for the boy, but I'll show you what? the same discrimination for it's adult just diapers. Urine, Congresswoman. <laughs> That's not, and, and boys have more happening to fill out diaper space. So, really, square footage, it should cost more for the men, right? But probably because they need more absorbance. <laughs> <laughs> they need more absorbent material, right. so it should right? cost more, right? Yeah. Now, we did this same study two or three years ago. Um, and they were egregious around children's toys. So I had my interns do this just this week, and this is what they found online at retailers throughout the country. Mm, mm, mm. So this is up-to-date current. So what are we gonna do about it? How does price discrimination add another layer to the wage inequality that women also deal with? Well, it's yet another blow. Um, when I did the service review in 1996, we found out through the Assembly Office of Research in California that women were paying $1,400 in a gender tax every year, more uh, than men. So imagine, on top of the fact that we're in a, C, a she session, not a recession, more women are out of work like than men, work. and there's uh, 1.3 million women who have left the workforce since COVID hit and have not returned, in part because of the lack of childcare. This number is the highest number of women not employed since 1991. So you couple that with women out of work, um, women getting paid less than men, and on top of that, products are, and services are costing them more. There ought to be a law, and that's why I've introduced the Pink Tax Repeal Act, and we have 51 co-sponsors on it now. This issue, this pink tax issue, when we talk about the sh the, what, say the word again, a she session? A she session instead she of a session. recession. I like it. Does the she session strike women equally or even within that, is there additional inequities based on race? Oh, no question. Um, it's more egregious for women of color, um, African-American women, Latina women, um, and the amount of um, loss in income uh, is the greatest for Latina women. So your pink tax repeal act, it's bipartisan. And basically we're trying to get all of these manufacturers and retailers on the same plane to basically say, if it's something as simple as deodorant and it both it keep both of y'all from being musty, it should be the same price. That's right. And unless you can prove- I'm sure it's not worded like that. I'm <laughs> no. sure you worded it more professionally. You probably said FTC and attorney general, you used a lot of the That's proper right. words. That's right. We, we did use more proper words to basically say, if you don't play by these rules, you're going to be sued. And so then the bill has 48 co-sponsors right now. What, has there been any pushback that you've seen so far on, on Actually, your proposal? The numbers have grown. It's now at 51. I've talked to the chairwoman of the subcommittee. She loves the bill and we're going to have a, a, a hearing on it and hopefully get it to the House floor uh, within the next few months. And we can credit you with helping me get it over uh, the top. Desi. Yes. Desi. <laughs> no credit here. No credit here. What role can consumers play in provoking change? And by well, consumers, I mean men. You know what I'm talking about. <laughs> We're the problem. I know. You are the problem. Well, you, well, the problem is that it's not illegal in most states to charge more for services based on gender or charge more for products. You should not be discriminating on goods and services based on gender. It should be based on the time it takes to do a service and what's in the product. Women pay about 40% more to get their hair cut than men do, and they pay about 60% more at the dry cleaners for the same service for the same item. And then for car repairs, they pay about 30% more. Now, in California, back in the 90s, I had legislation passed that was signed into law that said for services, you had to base it not on gender, but on the amount of time it takes to provide that service. For instance, I timed the last time I got my hair cut. It took 10 minutes. And I watched a man getting his hair cut, and it took longer. So if we do base it on time, then I think you're going to see the tables turned a little bit, and then there'll be an outcry <laughs> from you guys because you're going to be paying more for your $2 dry cleaning shirt. When would you say that you all were first aware of a pink tax existing? 
because you know you, you got to figure you have a little bit of a blind spot to certain inequities and then one day you just go wait a minute when was all, <laughs> yeah. when was your wait a minute moment congresswoman i'll start with you uh, it was when i took my husband's oxford shirt shirts to the dry cleaner and they were you know a dollar fifty a shirt and my oxford shirt costs you know three fifty or four dollars that's when i thought wait a minute something's wrong here I can remember when I first started shaving my legs around six, seven years old. I was a very hairy child. <laughs> uh, no, I was 13, 12, 13, somewhere around there. And my mom bought me a razor and some shaving cream. And I, I remember the Gillette razor being considerably more expensive than what men use. And my mom refusing to buy me that razor and also bought me a can of Barbasol, like the old school <laughs> men's shaving cream. Jeez. And so when I shave my legs, I use like, I just use this stuff for men. And I still, if I'm being honest, I still have an affinity for the smell of Barbasol. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I just never shave my legs. Uh, mine was, I went through a terrible phase where I had, um, we'll call it a pixie haircut to be nice about it. <laughs> and I went to a hair salon and uh, the girl's haircuts were like about 20 to $30 more. And I was like, why? I'm literally getting the same haircut as that guy in the chair. And I just at the time thought that they were just a really like sexist hair place. And they were like, oh, well, women, you know, you guys have more layers. I'm like, it's the exact same haircut. And then it wasn't until I went to your office and I was ashamed. I was like, oh my God, this is a thing, like another thing to add on top of everything else. So you opened my eyes, Congresswoman. Good. We want to open the eyes of both men and women in this country to recognize that this is another form of discrimination that we've got to stamp out. Well, Congresswoman, I know we don't have a lot of time with you, and I want you to be able to get back into those halls of justice and fight with all of those idiots that you see on the floor <laughs> every day. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Please. Yes. And I know that, you know, after about four decades, in public service in the form of politics, you've made the decision to retire. So, you know, in your own words, you know, just tell us what's next for you. What, what does retirement, look? because I'm always, I feel like people who are for people and who fight for the people, you don't turn that off. That's right. Like I have buddies that are retired firefighters and now they train firefighters. Like th there's still something else that they do that's adjacent to helping people. So what does retirement look like for you? Have you decided what that, what the next four decades is gonna be? Well, I, I don't know exactly, but all I'm doing is going home um, because I made a commitment to my husband that I would spend more time at home. So um, I'm going to continue to be engaged, use my voice. Um, I wanna start a nonprofit foundation for the region in which I live. And uh, I wanna continue to give back. So I will continue to do that. Well, Congresswoman Spear, thank you so much for going beyond the scenes with us. And uh, I'll be sending you an email. I have some uh, discount deodorant that I will be more than happy to sell you for sell a me? fair price. <laughs> How dare you? <laughs> thank you I'll, so I'll much, I'll send you some of that pink stuff that I have, okay? <laughs> fair enough. Great All to right. be with thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. So after the break, Desi and Stacy and I would like to talk more about how this segment came together. This is Beyond the Scenes. We'll be right back. Desi, Stacy, walk me through how this piece came to be because the Congresswoman is presenting a whole bunch of different stuff and y'all only have four minutes, maybe five and a half to break <laughs> down this issue. How can you break down centuries of inequality against the woman in five minutes. <laughs> Get ready to feel bad about yourself, Roy. <laughs> Get ready. How'd this piece come to be? Just walk me through the germination of it in the building. Well, Stacy and I were making a special for Comedy Central called Desi Lytic Abroad. You can find it on Paramount Plus. Stream Indeed. it now, <laughs> anytime. You feel like getting out of your living room, traveling the world. <laughs> I think it plays better now than it did. And things are still just as bad as they were when we filmed it. So it's uh, still totally Yay. relevant. 
Yay. Uh, anyway, and um, Congresswoman Spear was kind enough to talk to us for, for the special. And I think we only had, like you said, we only had a few minutes f- of time with her, uh, not only to shoot, but in the actual piece itself. And and she was able to beautifully shed a light on all of the discrimination that women face when it comes to wage inequality and health care. Uh, but one thing that came up when we sat down and spoke with her is the pink tax. And we definitely talked about it a little bit in that interview, but there just wasn't enough time. So Stacy and I felt like we really wanted to do a bigger piece on it. So she was kind enough with her time to give us uh, a whole other interview. So we went back to D.C. and did an entire piece on the pink tax. Yeah, I mean, and her office had all those products, so I didn't even know that it existed. And I just remember like that kind of overshadowed what we were there to talk about. Not really, but it was just like, we just didn't know. And we were both very outraged about it. And we just exchanged a glance. We're like, we're gonna do a segment on this. Something on this. Yeah, it's one and of those And then Desi tried like, to flip a table. Well, I did. I did she flip did. the table. I pulled my back and it hasn't been the same since, but I destroyed <laughs> some furniture. And she um, couldn't use ointment on her back because it cost more for a woman than it did a man. So she's just exactly. No, we, it was one of those things where like, as a woman, you notice small things that come up like, oh, why is that so much more expensive than this one? Oh, well, I guess I'll just buy the men's version. Or why am I paying $3 more for my husband's shirts at the dry cleaners than my own? Oh, well, I guess I just will boycott dry cleaning now. It, you, little things like that you you clock, but we didn't realize how huge the issue was until she really pointed it out. Stacy, in the building, for the listeners who don't know this, you are like there's two types of segment directors. There are the people who go, OK, what's the story and how do we make this funny? And then there are the people that are more lighthearted and go, I'm funny how do I keep this funny? There's too much sad shit in my funny. Oh no, I've got to add more sad shit to my funny. Wait, where is this going? Why am I getting insecure all of a sudden? No, this isn't a bad thing because it's it's the balance and it's just, it's cereal, it's, it's cereal and milk. Some people put milk in the bowl first, then the cereal. Some people put, you get what I'm saying? Yeah. That? No, Wait, that's what? So savages. Savages. That that's is what do that. no, they're animals. Cereal. There's people out there who do it. No, there's only one way to do it. At the end of the day, it's still a bowl of cereal, is my point. And, and to me, <laughs> you have a different approach from a lot of the other segment directors. So how do you navigate the seriousness of a topic with humor? Like how are you able to balance that? Well, I hope I balance it, but with um for this particular segment. I think one of the good things about working with Desi is we both have an absurd sense of humor. I think we bonded over our <laughs> love for like naked gun and airplane. And we've pitched a lot of ideas that always get shut down. And I think one of the vehicles I'd like to use to tell a serious story is like kind of showing it in an absurd way to get the point across. So it's not just like statistics and facts and whatever. So we were like, let's show a way that there's this gender price discrimination by maybe going to a store and <laughs> kind of <laughs> wait in a in a store was the store open or did we rent out the store and we just shot in a store we can't afford that yeah right? i mean we can't come afford on, to you've been on shoots no no, no. no we we don't even a... get crafty we have to like you know sneak in corn nuts in the stock room no it was fully oh. open we were dodging customers open. i mean it was funny i'm running <laughs> Me and the DP went down one aisle because we were scouting the aisle. We're like, oh, let's do this here. And then there was like a lady shopping for like canned peas and she was just taking her time. We're like, okay, fine, we'll go to another aisle. And we just had to keep working around the customers. And um, it's how we do it. It's how we do it at the Daily Show. Don't act like you've never leg. shaved your legs in the middle of a grocery store before. Oh, of course, of course. Absolutely. Yeah. And so, I, yeah, and it was just fun. And then, you know, Desi and I work, um, I mean, her ideas are just as absurd as mine. We just piggyback off and like take it to this extreme place where hopefully it goes and, you know, we just do it till they shut us down. And um, we thought, let's just do it in a way where we go to the grocery store and Desi investigates it. I don't really know what the justification of you like sneaking around it was. Oh, because you weren't paying for it. You weren't going to pay for it. So, um, right. 
I'm had sure. to go very incognito, almost, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, real it, real investigative work. Well, I think that's the thing that makes us laugh so hard is like us taking our jobs way too seriously. So anytime we have an opportunity for me to just take my job too seriously and not do it that well, we commit <laughs> yeah. a thousand percent. But Stacy is one of my absolute all time favorite directors to work with. She, nice. no, you really like you, she's so good at not only being a collaborator, but what you said, like Stacy's excellent at knowing how to tell a story clearly, including all the facts, making sure that there's an arc to it, making sure that we're, we're telling the full picture, but also making it really funny. And then she also has a really unique visual comedy brain. So she tries to direct the pieces in a way where where she's she gets creative and finds new ways to tell the story that didn't exist to begin oh with. Oh my God, you guys stop. It's I, true. I, well, that's well, I the mean, truth. Like your mind works in a different way to get to the same bowl of cereal. Y'all had a game show in the middle of like. Yeah. <laughs> where no one wins. <laughs> Men win. As displayed in some of these products we have with us today in a game we call I mean, Desi and I just, again, like without trying to be preachy, we just try to put it in a fun package that can like kind of speed it up because also we have to like, we have that time challenge where we have to make it as interesting as possible and give as much information as possible in like a short window of time. So we're like, why don't we do a, because you kind of automatically go to the prices right you know, mindset when you're doing this. And so, um, and I think it was a collaboration between both of us because Jackie, Congresswoman Jackie Spear wanted to show off all the products. $34 to $44. Oh, great. So while your little girl is learning how to walk, she'll also learn how to navigate the system that's exploiting her. Sorry. These are two children's snorkels. $8.84. 1622 for the pink. So women literally have to pay more to breathe. Sorry. I just love Desi's graphic face going, sorry, in between all the products. Um, this is where you're so good though, because like anything where it's like da data heavy or number heavy or too much information, Stacy always comes up with a way to, to get it out quickly and efficiently in a really fun visual way. Thank you, thank you very much for saying that. What, is there anything, Desi, that got cut that you wish had made it. There's always one joke for its correspondence. <laughs> There's always one joke. We go, come on, man, you cut that. Hey, this it's time, was, it didn't fit. There were so, there were two dumb, one of, it, this was a brilliant visual gag that Stacy came up with where in the grocery store, I was like army crawling <laughs> on my elbow, on the floor, like chin <laughs> almost to the grocery store floor. This was clearly before COVID. And it was so dumb, but we we did so much footage footage of that. And just because of the fact that we spent, I spent so much time on that floor. I thought, well, this should make it in the piece. It, it was the on cameras the, uh, weren't even rolling. I just wanted to rolling. see if she would do that. Yeah, what a good sport. <laughs> and then the other thing, do you do you remember sitting down with Ryan, the um, economy professor? And for some reason, we discovered this like flirtation that I had with him, where I was suddenly <laughs> in love with him in the middle of the piece. And we had this weird runner where I kept like <laughs> under my breath telling him that I loved him. It had oh, nothing yeah. to do with anything, but it, I think it wound up, it was like, it remained in the first two or three cuts because we just found it so dumb. And at a certain point, I think people were like, that's not what this piece is about. Your love for this man is not, it's not gonna make it, Desi. I would say also, almost every time Desi does her own stunt work, she puts her heart and soul into it and it always gets cut. Oh, Desi. She'll be, like there's a there's one thing we did where she fell into a bunch of trash bags. I think a oh, yeah. a needle poked her, whatever. And then also in the grocery store, you were testing out razor scooters and you knocked down paper towels, which we immediately felt bad. We had to st stack back up afterwards because we didn't want to like. Oh you know. no! Oh, I forgot about that. <laughs> yeah, there's the a lot of destruction we leave. Yeah. And so the pink tax starts at an early age, infancy, even, and you all are parents. You know, Stacy, you're a new mother. So Have you noticed the difference between boys and toys? Like, because I'm sure you've bought toys for other people's children or whatever. Yeah. Desi has a son. You uh, like? Have you noticed? Have you started noticing 
the pink tax and the prevalence of it, even at such a young age, even with a bye bye baby, 15% off coupon. I do get those in the email every single day. It's hilarious you say that. Um, I you can started, use as many I, as you need. Sorry. I know that's true. I didn't start paying attention to this stuff till we did this segment. And so now I'm like very aware of it. And I would say for the most part, like all those toys, which by the way, it's just a rip off of an industry, but it's a separate piece. Um, the Everything for the most part seems to be equal, but there was this one uh, kids activity gym. I don't even know why they call it a gym. Like those, you know, the stupid things they lay on with all those crap hanging the and there was one yeah and they there was one that was like a very stereotypical pink with like unicorns that was like a couple of dollars more than the male version it's just a couple of dollars but still it's the principle of it and i like the other one better but it's i've noticed it um in that and also um an another another um like one of those crum what are those crinkly toys a couple of those oh, same yeah. yeah i don't know those sensory things i'm still learning i'm still very new i don't know what i'm doing but i all oh, the poppers the the poppers the pop Pop it. is that what you call them the poppers i'm gonna call them that from now i'm in on. i'm in my son's <laughs> room else. that's the oh only reason God. i have this oh the, pop, the popper what? joint i've seen those i don't yeah. even know what that is no i was talking about the yeah. crinkly paper things for the sensory things when they start to grab crap but whatever oh but, i know what you're talking but about what is that i don't hang on I, it's a pop it it's but just i don't understand just pop poppers it? what is yeah it's just point? holes and you just pop little it's like the new slap bracelet from the 80s i don't this pop it yes. for a boy costs four dollars for a girl ninety seven dollars <laughs> what else in here i believe it this this basketball for a boy 37 cents for a girl nine hundred dollars <laughs> i'd love doing this show in my son's room <laughs> he's I so just confused the, i just, I just like daddy just give me my toys Roy's going around telling people that he's buying his son poppers. I'm like, <laughs> after the break, I want to talk a little bit about solutions and ways that we can try and bring about change to the pink tax. I know that the Congresswoman is doing her part, but we want to also talk about some of the marketing and the strategy and how retailers have been able to pull this off. This is Beyond the Scenes. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Beyond the Scenes as we bring this conversation about the pink tax home, the pink tax, where women need equality on the cost of goods and services. In spite of the fact that eventually men pay for the dates and y'all get in free for ladies night and you get free <laughs> drinks from strangers at a bar and that saves you a lot of money, yet you still want to be... How hilarious would that be if that had been my position with the Congresswoman? <laughs> oh, I'm like, where? Hell well. well. <laughs> ah, ah. I would have loved it. She just I, takes her DJ headphones off, slams and it's like, yo, over. I, we, didn't, we didn't have enough time with her, but I seriously, with a straight face, I was just going to ask her, yeah, Congresswoman. That would have been great. Congresswoman, do women getting in free for ladies night offset some of these things that you say are inequities? Yeah. How about all the doors I've opened? <laughs> oh, how fucking hilarious would that have been? But we did not have time. Get her back. Get her back on yeah. the phone. Get her back. Let's get her back. So, Desi, in the piece, you talk about the term pink it and shrink it. What is this pink it and shrink it marketing strategy and why is it problematic? Well, contrary to the, there's a common misconception that that is just the surgery that a woman has to rejuvenate post birth. It is not that. It is pink it actually it. pink it or shrink it, pink it and shrink it. Yeah, it's actually, from what I understand, a marketing term when you take an item that is made for men or a gender neutral item and you shrink it down to the size for a woman and you make it pink, specifically to market it to women. So essentially it should cost less, but inevitably it costs more. So we literally just go, oh, it's for ladies. Look, it's in a pink box and smaller, and we're gonna yes. charge you more. Should we move more towards gender neutral products? What's the solution to this, Stacey? I mean, I think it's crazy that Congresswoman's been fighting this for decades and there's still, I mean, when Desi and I were trying to think of like a way to come up with a solution to this, we were like, people were saying, why don't you just buy the male version? And then Desi does that beautiful, long you know zoom in shot where you're like oh sure it's just another thing to add on to 
all the obstacles we have to do to be a woman. And for me, that speech you give is like the thesis of this whole thing. How can women afford to live in this world? If the man's version is cheaper, then just buy that one. Yeah, sure. If you think about it, it's just one extra step in a series of extra steps that women take every day to thrive in a man's world. Like how we get up a little extra early every morning to put on an outfit that looks professional yet accessible, but not too accessible because we don't want to be taken advantage of. Or how we walk an extra five blocks to work so that we can avoid the construction zone because men like to tell us to smile more. Then when we get to work, we want to make our voices heard, but in a way that's helpful and strong without being overbearing or shrill. You know, we do all of this without even an ounce of resentment because resentment causes wrinkles and society does not value aging women. Is there a men's wrinkle cream that you can recommend? Yes, there are several. I'm sure it costs less? Maybe a little. To me, that was the most important part of the segment and Desi did it all in one freaking take. Beautiful. Wow. She looked like she was crying inside as she was doing it because as you should. <laughs> when we were talking to people, they were all like, just buy the man's panic, just buy the man's panic. It's like, no, that's not the point. Women often do have to take extra steps throughout the day just because they're a woman. And so this shouldn't be one extra step that they have to take. I don't know what the solution is, but it, it not should that. not be one more thing for a woman to have to go out of her way to do. People just stop being assholes. Just let us all be equal. Stop overpricing. Stacy, in three sentences or less, solve economic sexism, please. <laughs> Ready, go. Seconds. I'll do it in one second. <laughs> so, no, I don't. Stop. Stop doing it, guys. Just stop. <laughs> Make it quit. Make it stop. Maybe a simple solution is all of the goods that charge more for women's uh, versions of the product Maybe in the male versions of the commercials, maybe there's just like a woman that just pops up in the middle of it so that we can make these products more gender neutral. Because commercials are very gender divisive. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, like if you look at like a razor, this is the Gillette razor and you can shave your, like the, the blade comes out the lava and the guy grabs <laughs> it and, and then just while he, you lava. can shave your face and then just have a woman's head pop in and women too. <laughs> That's all the time we have for today. Thank you very much to our guests, Desi Lydic, Stacey Angeles, and Congresswoman Jackie Spear for taking us beyond the scenes.